In this video, I'm going to tell you how to ace your next SOC analyst interview. I've compiled a list of the most common questions you'll get in an interview. Now keep in mind, this is for the technical interview. I'll go over briefly the soft skills you'll need to address at the end, so stay tuned for that. Let's get started. Explain the CIA triad. Now this is the alma mater of security professionals. Confidentiality, integrity, availability. Be sure to explain them slightly. Confidentiality has to do with keeping an organization's data private. Only authorized users and processes should be able to access. Integrity means that the data can be trusted. It has not been altered. And availability is, can people access the information that they need to access? Explain DNS. Make sure to remember what port it's on. I made the mistake of not knowing. It's port 53. Commit that to memory. It's domain name system. Be sure to explain a little bit in depth on how it works. Make sure that you explain what happens when you put in a URL in your browser. Don't just say it maps an IP address to a name. Say when you put the URL in your browser, it checks the cache on your browser to see if it has any known information on that. And then it goes to your router, see if that has anything in the cache. And then it goes to your ISP cache to see if it exists in there. And if it doesn't exist in there, then it'll query one of the many DNS servers that are across the world to see if it can locate the actual IP address of what you're putting in. What is the OSI model? Application, presentation, session, transport, network, data, physical. A pretty funny mnemonic device I heard when I was going through college that helped me remember a pretty swell teacher never does PCP. That's how I remember it now. And make sure you explain a little bit in depth what goes into each of them. Physical is the wiring, the hardware. Data is the transporting of the information across those cables. So think of a switch. Network is the routers, the ARP table, the routing table. Transport layer uses transmission protocols, including TCP and UDP. Session layer maintains connections and is responsible for controlling ports and sessions. Presentation layer ensures that the data is in a usable format, and that's where data encryption occurs. Application layer is the human computer interaction layer. So it's the web page that you see, it's what you click. What is XSS and how do you mitigate it? Well, if you don't know, then you don't know. But XSS is cross-site scripting. The main preventative measure that you can implement is input sanitization, which usually starts with application layer. There you go, OSI model, by the programmers. But there are web application firewalls that do the job as well. What's the difference between hashing and encryption? Hashing is permanent. It is intended to preserve the integrity of the file. Whereas encryption is reversible. It's intended to ensure the confidentiality of the file or the email. Now, you don't have to go necessarily into encryption types, but you can do a deeper dive if you want to. What are vulnerability versus risk versus threat? A vulnerability is simply a weakness in the organization or the hardware or the systems that are inside the organization. Risk is the likelihood versus the impact of the vulnerability. So if that vulnerability was to be exploited, what would happen and what would be lost? And threat is who is gonna act on that vulnerability. Is it a person? Is it a worm? Is it a bot? Stuff like that. Now the questions up till now are what I like to call brain dump questions, as in you either know what it is or you don't. The next two questions are situational questions that require you to think on your feet and gauge a person's overall understanding. I hand you a computer. It's compromised. You can't use any antivirus scans or similar scanning tools to find any IOCs. How do you go about investigating? First things first, you gotta make sure the computer is no longer on the network because if it is compromised and you plug it into a network, it can potentially establish a connection going out to the bad actor and that's bad. Then you have to go into the file system to see if there's any odd looking files or any names incorrectly, go into the Windows files, go into the temp files, see if anything has been created, go into task manager, see if there's any running processes that are out of the ordinary, look at CPU usage, go into the list of installed programs, see if anything there is out of the ordinary. And then finally, if you can't find any indicators of compromise, you would have to re-image the computer. And considering this was compromised to begin with, that would have already been the last step anyways. But make sure that you mention that because they know that you know what a re-image is. The world has been hit by a virus worm attack what have you done to protect the organization? So for this, you'll have to see what kind of attack it is, depending on the tools you have in the environment, and do a full system scan on your organization to see if that indicator of compromise has been found. And if anything is found, take appropriate precautions to make sure that that is contained and re-imaged and remediated accordingly. This question can come in many forms, but as a SOC analyst, it's perfect for determining your level of competence if they were to hire you. SOC analysts handle high-risk situations where one incident poorly handled can cause a absolute mayhem for the company compared to other tech jobs like programming and technical support. There are dozens of other technical questions you can get asked. Those are just the main ones I noticed in my interviewing with three separate SOC analyst roles. Now as promised, soft skills. Don't be a dick. That's all. Be nice. <laughs> Don't be arrogant. Be confident. 
Try your best not to stumble over answers, but being nervous is normal, so don't worry about that. Make sure you have at least three questions you want to ask about the job and or the organization. So what's like a typical day for this role? What are the goals of the security department? Have there been any major incidents? This shows you're interested in the work, not just the job to get money. After all, we're not security workers, we're security enthusiasts. We live and breathe security, right? Well, at least make it seem that way. At the end of the interview, thank them for their time and opportunity to interview. And that's it for my last minute prep guide for all you SOC analyst seekers. Please like, comment, and subscribe down below if this helped. And if you landed that job because of this career-saving video, let everyone know in the comments how it went. See you in the next video.